guys, so just working on the uh, wolf head here. This is what we started with. So that's the Terminator Wolf Lord wolf head on top of Logan Grimnar's upper torso. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But I've always thought this kind of wolf was a bit lifeless, which is, I guess, makes sense because it's dead. So let's have a look at something that I thought might be a bit more energetic, a bit more way out of control. What I've done is we've got the, the Chaos Warhound head. I picked the one that's most wolf-like and uh, look at this bad boy on top like that. I reckon this is the way to go if we're going for John Blanche. I really think this is what the Space Wolves need because they're just crazy. Jeremiah and I were talking about Logan's axe and um, just working on the axe head here. I've widened it substantially, added the two wolf heads from the other axe and uh, um, Chung was asking where I got the axe from. Um, it's two frost axes from the Space Wolf Space, Space, Space Marine kits. This is the underside and this is the top side. We'll do a diamond in the middle here and some stuff up the top and then more detail coming out there and we'll extend the, the bottoms of the axes, maybe the lips up a bit as well. Um, but this axe was taken from a Chaos um, Terminator Lord, I think, in battle. And then um, it was purified and now Logan Grimnar wields it. So we were talking about how we could have a bit of chaotic energy in the piece, a bit of chaos coming through. And I think that this is... Uh, it's a pretty awesome way to begin. I think that the only thing is that there might be a concern that it, it's a bit too dominant. Um, I'm not painting it, but I would say to Jeremiah, if I was, I, I usually add a lot of detail to my pieces and then I plan to paint it back. So whatever the scheme is, it would make this the less um, intense part of the design, um, paint-wise. So you wouldn't really focus on it, but it's still there as detail, um, which I'm sure you would probably do anyway. So I've got the arm attached the right angle that I'm looking for. I just need to add a little bit of extended area to the screen stuff. Maybe move it in, move it out just slightly. Um, and what I've done is I turned the head. It was facing towards the Necron and he was going to be shooting the Orc out of the sky point blank without looking, which would be cool. But I'll show you, here's the problem that I have. I have two problems. If I do that, something about the energy of the piece doesn't work for me. He's looking at the Necron, but really, it, it that to me even more suggests that he's kind of losing his balance because he's he's either like shouting to his troops, "Come on, let's go get them," um, and he looks like he's pointing more. Um, whereas if he's looking, it looks definitely much more like he's aiming at the orc, uh, and it also looks like he's pivoting his body. Um, if you imagine, he's got his braids coming off his mustache and his long hair and he's got the ribbons on the axe that are moving around and behind him and he's got the cape that's moving up and around him so everything's moving in a clockwise, clockwise direction and uh, if his head is facing the other way where's his hair gonna go? like it's gonna be all bunched up in the inside of the pocket of the armor here and it's not really gonna be going anywhere but this way his braids can be flowing in the same direction that the ribbons are flowing that the cape is flowing and he's spinning uh, counterclockwise and that way the Necron is getting sort of swept up and smashed backwards away from us because it's a minor part of the diorama we want to focus on him and it's almost just as cool because really he's turning to shoot the orc and in his turn to shoot the orc he takes the Necron out it's like a second thought it's like an afterthought he, the Necron's just getting smashed in the way because he just happens to be in the way of the axe so it could work cool both ways. Um, this way, everything gets to have the counterclockwise, uh, sorry, the clockwise direction, and I think we'll man maintain that um, momentum. I, I don't want to make the mistake of having adverse momentum, which I think would be the case if I looked the other way. Uh, so, uh, lots of work has been done, though you can't really see it, but um, it's all magnetized, both arms, and it's magnetized to the base. So I'll just show you what's going on here with this cape, because you'll notice the copper wiring easier with two hands. Um, I've tried to do my standard cape design where I use gravity and things to make it sort of work. Yeah. Quincy really loves to talk the moment I start recording. Hey, hey you, be quiet. So um, that didn't work so well and I ended up actually going back and trying some other things. Um, you can see here I've got some uh, cape designs and this is plasticard. Actually it's not a bad result uh, if you're looking for quick and dirty capes that are quite dynamic in nature uh, and want them instantly, just put some thin plastic card. This is uh, two or three mil, I think. Yeah, two mil in uh, boiling water and shape it with some pliers or some, you know, 
implements of your choice, and there you go. You got a you got a cape. Uh, simple, and it's really quite firm. When you take it out of the water, or um, when you finish bending it, it stays in that shape. But I wanted something else. I needed to get a really perfect circle, um, so like a big sweeping arc. And the problem with gravity is it usually has quite acute angles. Uh, it pulls on the downmost point and everything bends in that direction. Uh, so that wasn't going to work. Neither was shaping it to a sphere um, because I wanted to get an irregular um, cape where the top was smaller than the bottom and the bottom is wider there. Uh, and I guess I could have shaped it to some kind of thing but what I ended up doing was this uh, using some spiring, some copper wiring to create a frame. And the copper wiring is just glued into the back of the neck there and then it comes out in a nice round curve and then I've done my usual thing of letting the green stuff dry flat in the press. Actually, wait, you guys haven't seen this yet. That's right, it's in another Mephistone video. But um, I sandwich my green stuff in a little roll and I put it between these thin strips of plastic and let it sit in that press like a slide for about an hour. And then I bring it out, it's nice and flat. Oh, and the slides are they're lubricated with like oil and uh, it comes out, it's nice and flat. And then I just attach it to the uh, the metal wiring with super glue at certain points and then hopefully when it sets, so I'll give it a day or two, um, I can just cut around the metal and I'll get a nice cape that's fixed in that position. Um, we'll see how we go. I might actually keep the metal in there and build around it. But um, yeah, so that's how I get that big sweeping motion to the cape. And uh, what else is going on here, just quickly while I've got your attention. Um, just improve the bolter somewhat, adding some depth to it. Decided to do a different feed actually. Um, bullets going in one side through the uh, wrist feed and then being, the casings being injected into the air out the other side. That's fun and of course you haven't seen this yet but this is the new wolf head uh, which I'm really excited about. So this is the, uh, the Chaos Warhounds wolf and I think it just looks completely sick compared to like the little wolf that was there before which is uh, this guy who's you know he's pretty great but in comparison like, this is just one great wolf, yeah? One nasty fellow. And uh, if you paint him up in, in wolf style, I think he'll look great. Just gotta go in and green stuff some of the detail, get rid of that hole and all of that sort of stuff. And that's gonna look really gnarly. Um, while I'm talking about that, what I've done here is just, uh, in conclusion, is all my different green stuff molds uh, of the whole Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer Fantasy? Warhammer Fantasy Chaos Warhound box set and uh, they've got all the detail a young man could need to create more uh, hair because as much as I would love to go through and do the hair strand by strand along the back here till about midsection um, I want to see if I can do it a bit more logically. Thanks very much for watching and uh, I will catch you guys in the next video.